On board our yacht, we have just sailed to one of the most beautiful islands in the Bahamas. Using just the wind to get us here, we're now floating gracefully. The sun has risen and we've woken up just outside the walls of one of the prettiest little places in this cruising mecca. We're just an hour's flight from Miami and this is Hope Town and we're off to explore it for the very first time. So if you've ever wondered what it's like to live on board, exploring some of the most beautiful and colorful corners of the world with John and I, then join us and welcome onboard Navigare's Chips All In, a Lagoon 46, as we charter the Abacos region. Good morning. This is literally paradise on earth. We're just anchored at the front of Hope Town. We're gonna to put down the tender and we're gonna tender over into the town. That lighthouse you see behind us is the oldest running kerosene lighthouse in the world. We'll head up there soon and then show you the pros and cons living and working on board before grabbing lunch at one of the coolest beach clubs here in Elbow Key, which is one of the closest spots from Marsh Harbour where we picked up our boat in our last episode. This morning was a pretty slow start for John and I. Just been doing some work and just relaxing. We had a cup of tea, made some breakfast. We went for a little dive, which was really beautiful to wake up. We're in a really shallow anchorage. Um, it's so surreal to be obviously just anchored in such shallow water. We're right next to the channel here though, so we have a lot of traffic going back and forth. They're creating a lot of wake, so it's been a bit of a rocky start as well. Hello. If you saw our last episode, John and I have officially kicked off this new lifestyle where we work 50% of the year. So John is an airline pilot flying every second month back in Australia, and I'm keeping busy editing these vlogs. How are you feeling about the whole month off thing? Amazing. Really? I've already forgotten how to fly. <laughs> Does it feel good not to be at work? It feels amazing. It feels weird. It feels like we've we're back like we were when we were in Takana. It feels weird to think that you're going back to work next month. Like I feel like this is just life now. This life may seem pretty relaxed and cruisy, but let me assure you behind the scenes, we're already lining up what we're going to be doing next month. It feels absolutely crazy to be going all the way to the other side of the world for two weeks of work and then to come straight back. I know. Insane. We've come all the way over here to the Bahamas, which obviously took us a ridiculous amount of time. And then John's got to go back to work for a couple of weeks and then he's taken six weeks off. Well, more than that, seven weeks off so that we can sail over in the Mediterranean. And then he goes back for two weeks and then he's got another month off. What are some places that you think we should explore this year? We haven't done any of Central or South America, Caribbean, Canada and Eastern Europe as well and i guess we haven't done those regions because they're so far away from australia yeah they're big distances eastern europe is okay but we did all the like the popular ones first yeah and also azerbaijan visit my dad who's over there yeah. or he'll be over there for a little while a few cool. options georgia georgia um, is definitely up on our bucket list so it's been on my bucket list since covid really yeah and we've been to the middle east a few times but i'd also like to go to muscat really yeah oman really yeah it's supposed to be beautiful what yeah. is muscat I, don't even, I wouldn't even be able to point that on the map. Really? No. It's amazing. We just quickly would like to thank the sponsors of this episode, Speakly, that's helping us scrub up on our French, on our Spanish and our Italian, the three countries we're going to be taking you to in just a few weeks. So Speakly offers seven different languages, including Finnish, German, Estonian and Russian, as well as Italian, French and Spanish. And it encourages you to practice your writing and your speech skills. Quiero. So it helps you to learn a language five times faster than what you usually would. And if you're like me and you need like a little reminder to pick up your phone for just five minutes and practice every day, you can turn on your notifications and it keeps you on track to achieve your goal. You can practice for as little or as long as you like. Five minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, but if you choose 30 minutes a day in just three to four months, you can have solid speaking skills. So if you're looking for a hobby ahead of your next holiday, a 
challenge, something to stimulate your brain. Learning a new language might be on your bucket list and it's been sitting there for a really long time. Well, Speakly is offering you guys seven day free trial. And if you like it, you'll then get 60% off an annual subscription. So click on the link in the description below. Thank you for using our link and we cannot wait to bring you here to Europe in just a few weeks. So do you know much about Hopetown? No. Need to look up a little bit of information before we head out to Hopetown. It is, it is so ridiculously hot. I know, it's boiling. My hair's gonna dry in two seconds. That's gonna shut off like crazy. Do you reckon? Yeah, gross. So the fact it is so hot at the moment, I'm worried that we're gonna have a gnarly storm this afternoon. So we're here at the end of the sailing season and if you saw our last episode, we've already had a bit of a taste of what to expect. And so with a hurricane brewing just off the coast, we're making the most of this good weather, leaving the boat unattended to explore land. I slept all night on a big white ship. Seagulls were dancing all around. We're waiting for the high tide before we look at bringing in chips all in. There are mooring balls in the bay and they only cost around 25 US dollars a day. So before we sneak our way in, we're scoping out the area first. What do you think? Well, this is pretty cool. We're on our own little tour. How pretty is it? I had no idea. It's kind of like a theme park. I love the houses. Look how they're so colorful. So it's really interesting. Like you go to Italy, a lot of the houses are colorful. You go to South Africa, the houses are colorful. You come down to the Caribbean. Bahamas, it's colourful. The people are really like lively and happy and colourful people. Supposedly there are just around 700 people that live here in Hopetown and they mostly get around on golf buggies. So we're trying to hire one ourselves so we can explore the island. I thought it was the end of the season. Huh. But the uh, chick at the liquor store was just saying it's really busy because it's like summer and everyone's on holidays. Oh yeah, cool. What about the buggy? So the buggies, they don't leave from here. Um, but we can go around the other side and there should be some buggies but she also said that they might all be booked out because it's okay, busy cool. and usually you have to book in advance. Okay, cool. Let's go. And so we tended to the eastern side of the bay carrying our camera, belongings in a dry bag and the drone to film the adventure. So we're just going to tie up and we're just going to find somewhere to have some lunch. It's so pretty. To give you a feel for the place, it's 10 a.m. on a Thursday morning and buggies aren't easy to come by as businesses are still rebuilding after Hurricane Dorian. You can't book when you're here. You book ahead of schedule and here are all the numbers this lady has provided. There you go. She gets asked all the time. So, so the lady inside said that they're 70 bucks for the day, but whether you hire them for an hour or two hours or 24 hours, it's the same flight price, 70 bucks. And you have to book it before you arrive or you can book them when you're here if they have availability. Bugger. Guess we're going to be walking to lunch on foot. Not far. Not far. Captain Jax? Captain Jax. But on the way, oh my gosh, check this out. We detoured <laughs> unexpectedly. Oh, is that the beach? Oh my gosh. I feel like I've died and gone to heaven. This is unbelievable. Oh my God. John, the church is on the beachfront. There may be around 700 coral islands in the Bahamas and thousands of beaches to choose from. Oh my god. But this is the very first one we laid our eyes it's on. It's so bright. Come check it out. It's amazing. I just found. But that's the thing about living on a boat. You can never get too comfortable. Did you hear that? Thunder. Yeah, that was thunder. And so we figured we'd better find lunch ASAP as our boat was unattended and out in the bay. Whenever there's a storm, we like to be on board in case we drag or in case someone else drags into us. So this is the little spot we're going to park up for lunch. It is so cute. It's like a little dock floating on the water and we're gonna grab some lunch here. It's got really good reviews on Google. A lot of the places here have had to rebuild after the cyclone. Dorian was a catastrophic category five Atlantic hurricane, which became the most intense tropical cyclone on record to strike the Bahamas and tied for the strongest landfall in the Atlantic basin. Google Maps still hasn't updated and the scars can be seen throughout this region. So it's hard to navigate the new businesses and even the marina where we picked up chips all in. It's underwater. At the time, Dorian's winds peaked at 185 miles or 300 kilometers per hour. Being here and 
knowing we're supporting the people, their economy, their livelihoods, and seeing the place rebuild slowly brings us joy. This place is called Captain Jack's and it is pink. Oh my God, look how cute it is. It goes up the street and then down here into the water. Do we go in through here? Hi, how are you? How cool is this place? Yeah, I'll stay right at the end. Okay. Do you want to go here? Yeah. Okay. Oh my gosh, look at that view. Oh my gosh, he ate a little ant. I'm going to get another one. This is it. This is it. A National Geographic photographer, babe. I reckon. <laughs> How did you capture that? that? With this. Be careful what you put that thing. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and over lunch, we saw the clouds build. The storms creep closer. We're just uh, deciding whether we should go up into the lighthouse or not. Because I don't know if you can see the storm behind us right now. I just want to quickly race up there. What do you reckon? I don't know. What do you reckon? I don't know, what do you reckon? Maybe we go back to the boat and then see what the weather does. Or we can come back in the morning. Yeah. Do we just want to chill, get some work done this afternoon? Yeah, okay, let's do that. All right, we're going to chill, we're going to get some work done, and then we're going to get back to the lighthouse a little later. But on our way back to the boat, we noticed a lady who was rowing frantically. The storm's coming, we'll see if she'd like a tow. Hi! Would you like a tow? Typically, I always say no. I think today I should yeah, I think so. Okay, easy, no problem. Yeah, because you want to wrap it around one of the things. Uh, you will not be able to hold it, I'm telling you, I've done it before. Hang on, watch out. Hi. There you go, perfect. Thank you. No problems. Turns out, Jeanette was a victim of Dorian. 45% of all homes in the Abacos and Grand Bahama were severely damaged or destroyed. That's 13,000 homes gone, and hers was one of them. We were able to salvage some of the wood, oh, wow. and so we built a tiny house. Jeanette also lost her boat in the hurricane. We were able to put some of the boat pieces and some of the original cottage into the house. Wow. So it's only 175 square feet, but it's super cute. And it's called Tiny House. Pineapple Cottage, and it has a sea view. Okay, thank you. Nice to meet you. And so it was back to the boat to hunker down and get ready to get some work done on board. Back home. Should we put it up on the davits? Or yeah, I reckon. It's a good workout anyway. Just, just jump off. And just grab your gear. We should take the boat out. For those new to boating, our davit is that steel device that's kind of like a crane that helps us raise and lower our tender into the water. Help me. There you go. You can do it. Put your back into it. <laughs> and so we drew the curtains and got stuck into work. Don't make me look like I'm the fatty. <laughs> this is what happens when Christina shops. Yeah. <laughs> These are your chips. No, they're not. You ate all of them. What are you doing? Mm. Administration. Administration. Life administration. Hey, well. The weather's looking better. We need to get up that lighthouse. Mm. Yeah. We check it out. We do. They have this tea here. John. Yeah. No, I don't know if you care or not. It's cinnamon tea. Caffeine free. It's literally 100% cinnamon. So it's not like chai. No. It's not like chai. It's literally just cinnamon. Yeah. And it is really delicious. And I also got this one as well. It's an instant ginger tea. It's really good. I haven't opened the peppermint yet. I haven't found this one in Australia before, so highly recommend if you're coming here to the Bahamas, try some of this stuff. It's really good. Just put a little bit of a dash of milk in it. All right, this is just procrastination. Let's get into some work. This is the less glamorous part about boat life and running a YouTube channel. I want to be as honest and realistic with you guys. I spend at least half my week editing and making these videos. And so the beauty in front of me teases me when I'm actually having to sit at my laptop. And so I have to remind myself life is a balance and being out here exploring new places and seeing the world 50% of the time is better than none. I've got 3% battery left. 
All right, so we're going to go to Firefly Resort. I think so. And you can just eat Restaurants. food there? Yeah, it's called a Sunset Resort, so hopefully it's open for lunch. This is real blogger life right now. We don't want to put the generator on, so I'm going to wrap my laptop in a towel and take it with me to charge at the restaurant. I guess it's our choice that we want to reduce our consumption on board because the boat is super comfortable. It has air con, water maker, and a generator. So this is what it's like working from a boat. You always have power problems, unless you've got solar, of course, or put the generator on. When living in a house, we take power for granted. But out here, you take it when you can get it. What are you doing? Oh my God. <laughs> I'm literally having to charge my laptop. <laughs> Electricity is something I'd never thought about on land because it was always accessible. I guess boat life reminds you never to take anything for granted, like fly screens. Last night, I was getting demolished by these ant things. They were all flying around my screen while I was editing, John. Look at them all. They're like just dead everywhere. Are you really going to take all that, Peg? Yeah. I really think it's a good idea. Why? Are we going to go? Oh, I should probably get a top on. Oh, that's right, my top on. That's this one, right? Yeah. And so, with the storm still brewing, we were tossing up whether we should go at all. Can we make a decision? Because it's been like half an hour. Oh, what do you want to do? You tell me. Well, I, I'm happy to put the generator on and work from here all afternoon and have sandwiches and like whatever. Or if you want to go to that place, let's go. Well, let's just go have a look at it. It'll only be like, we'll only be going for half an hour. Worst case scenario, it really pours, but my laptop's in the dry bag, right? Yeah. So it won't get wet. That's right. Well, that's all right then. As long as we don't get struck by lightning. Can that happen? Yeah. On a tender? Of course it can. And then what happens? We won't die though, will we? Christina. No, would we? I, why are you asked that? I don't know. And so we tended to the exclusive resort called Firefly in the subtle stormy conditions, looking for a power outlet and lunch. How cute is this place? We have everything. We ended up choosing a seat on the bar facing the water so we could keep an eye on that weather system. And I ordered a veggie burger and John ordered conch, a local delicacy. Wow, that looks so good, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, wow, that looks amazing. So this is conch, which is the thing in the shell. <laughs> trying to get my, trying to get the conch, conch fix while we're here. It was a good day, a good lunch. The storm stayed on the horizon and best of all, they let me charge my laptop at the bar. Hopefully I got a full charge. People knew her to make it whatever she put her mind to. So we are just on our way to go up to the lighthouse. Finally, we made a bit of a mistake. We thought that the lighthouse was open 24 seven. Turns out it's not. And it closed at five and John and I had already started pouring our first little rum by then. <laughs> Ooh. We um, have gotten up early. Well, kind of, it's like 9.30 a.m. <laughs> I just chowed down on some breakfast. Just put the tent down and we're going to go for a little, I was going to say whiz over there, but isn't like whiz mean toilet? Like you're going to go for a whiz? Yeah, it's a weird thing to say on camera. <laughs> we're going to go for a little whiz over to the lighthouse. It's the last kerosene lighthouse potentially in the world. I think like the most remarkable thing about it is that it survived Dorian. Everything was absolutely demolished through this area, but that lighthouse stood its ground and stood tall. You always lock up the boat when we leave, don't you? Yeah, we just got too much camera gear on there. Not lock it. Some people don't lock up. Yeah, I know. Some people just let their boat like completely yeah. open. Yeah, and they're, they're probably fine with it. I'd rather just not have to worry too much about it. Yeah, it's a good you know, idea. You still wanna like, I mean, if people still wanna get in, they could just go through a hatch, but like, there's no point making it easier than it needs to be, you know what I mean? To be fair though, we close our hatches too. <laughs> no, I mean lock them. We didn't lock them. You can just open them. Oh. <laughs> well, we're locking the hatches from now on now. Thanks, John. <laughs> There's a storm on the way, so we're gonna see how we go, whether we make it back or not in time before the storm. That's the objective. It looks like it's a, it's not a big one though, right? Well, it looks pretty big to me. What do you guys think? 
Does it look big to you? By the way, it's Friday today, karaoke Friday. So before checking out the lighthouse, John and I and this B are going to pop past Vagabond Adventures to touch base with our friends Edda and Jack on board about karaoke night tonight. Oh guys, he's holding on for his dear life. Until John sat on him and got stung. Oh. First one. First one. On the butt. On the butt. <laughs> How funny. Is, Is it hurt? Yeah, see, actually I can't leave. It's all right, it's okay? <laughs> yeah, it's all right. It's oh not that God. bad. <laughs> it's kind of funny. You kind of deserve that. Jack then helped us capture the moment. Can you? Uh, Thank you. Oh, Christina's not going to check. She just wants to look at my ass. She's going to have to pull it down. Yeah, yeah, pull okay. it down. We've got to check for the bee stick. Oh, no. I'm yeah. gonna... <laughs> it's like right up. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Get him off. <laughs> Get him off. Sorry, guys. No. Where is it? It's like right. I can't even. I don't have enough. <laughs> no, it's fine, it's fine. He was through my shorts, so it's all good. Hey guy, I sat on him. Sorry. Oh, sorry, buddy. <laughs> oh, poor, poor little guy. guy. I completely deserve that. We went on to organise karaoke plans and made our way to the base of the lighthouse. You have to show me how you do your knot because I've forgotten. How do you remember it? Uh, well, it's hard with the camera face. <laughs> John may be a little camera shy, but I requested a oh bee sting my God. update. You, you did get yeah. stuck. You need to take your photo. Oh my God. Are you filming it? Yeah, I'm filming it. Well, I'm glad you're not allergic to bees. This would have been a really awkward spot to find out that you're allergic. There is a medical center and a post office. Good to try. Mm, closed. For the 700 people who live on Hopetown, and if you were looking to buy here, this is what you can expect to pay for a slice of paradise. Vertical. Whoa. Wow. It's like an actual working lighthouse. <laughs> yeah, wow, because of lens. I reckon you could... What is the lens? Like the lens. But what is the lens? So you know you got a torch, it's got a yeah. little tiny globe, but it makes this big light. Yeah. It magnifies the light, and that's what makes it shine, because that's just the candle burning. A little candle creates that much light. Look at the size of the lens. That's so crazy. Then we stumbled upon someone special. Can I film you doing that? Yes, you can. The lighthouse keeper. My name is Jackson. In a rare behind the scenes, he showed us how it worked. So this is like the last one in the world, right? Yes, sir. Wow, amazing. So it operates like a big grandfather clock. It takes like about 460 cranks to Whoa. get the way to the top. <laughs> and it lasts you for two hours. Oh wow, so every two oh, hours you yes, come back. And it's a big uh, rotation. rotation. Yeah. yeah. And then you have to give it a little spin. Jackson has been the lighthouse keeper for two years. This here is what controls the kerosene flow. But it's only one little tiny light. That can be seen from 23 nautical miles or 43 kilometres away. Whoa. Oh, the boat's around this side. And at the top, while leaning on the rail, we met some of you guys up there. Small world, isn't it? It is such a small world. Okay, so we have to do a shout out to you guys. So where are you guys from? What are you doing here? Lexington, Kentucky. I think we're doing the same thing you're doing. <laughs> we're up here and we're like, hey, should we take a photo of you guys? We're like, hey. I think we know you guys. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Oh, and while we're here, see those moorings in the background? We're about to grab one. Not only because it's karaoke night at Captain Jack's, but the wind has just swung around. So we've decided to join a couple of our friends inside of Hopetown. So we're just getting the boat prepared and we're about to rip up this anchor and get out of this bad weather. I guess we'll take that snubber off. Yeah. Such a good lookout up here. You've got such great visuals. It's so high, it's crazy. All right, do you want to go forward? All right, we're up. All right, good practice, good practice session. It's the first time I have ever done this on board a catamaran. Second, after the Sundays. That time, everything was going well. 50 meters! Yeah, three more meters. Till. Oh. <laughs> a little bit of pressure. I put it up right. I just need to get it on that cleat. And we don't need extra lines to like this guy. Yeah, he's got lines on his boat. Okay. It's just forward about five meters. 
meters that way. Oh my God. All right, reverse. We were on, but because we're a cat, we have one more bow line to secure. Thanks, babe. <gasps> we did it! Holy shit. Our friends there for the celebration. I'm so proud! And so we could relax, giving karaoke our full focus. We hope you're enjoying these extra long real life and behind the scenes look into what it's like living on a boat. We're chartering the Bahamas with Navigare. So if you're thinking of giving boat life a go at any of their destinations globally, Navigare Yachting has given us a $200 discount code for you guys. If you just use the code Christina's Travels, make sure if you book, send us an email. I'll leave our details below and John and I will send you our Navionic pin so you can explore all the places that we've taken you on in this series. A huge thank you to our patrons who we've been sharing live up Updates with as we film our next series in the med to support our production make sure you leave us a like and subscribe it's completely free and of course a huge thank you to Speakly for sponsoring this episode so bloody grateful at this moment look at that Stan see you next week guys as John and I find a sinkhole here in the Bahamas